Evil threatens Mornstead. A malevolent force, insatiable and beyond death's reach, has been unearthed and awoken from a centuries-long slumber that, rising as a relentless tide, hungers for living flesh. This sinister darkness, once revered as a god by a forgotten civilization, gains purchase deep within Calorath's unfathomable bowels. A youth, an innocent plagued by nightmares of monstrous horrors, of umbral abominations, holds within his tormented soul the power to expel the encroaching abyss. The price? His eternal imprisonment. A dark crusader, a harrower from lands beyond, arrives in Mornstead to reveal heresy within her church, to cleanse its acrimony and profanity through blood. Her heart steeled, her blade sharp, she executes duty with utmost conviction. Beneath Calrath, these three disparate actors converge. Irreconcilable fates nonetheless lash together. The harrower trudges through mines, plums catacombs on a quest of enlightenment nestled in the darkest void. Here, she happens upon the child, his prison the ruined font of an altar erected in reverence to that ghastly deity, discovers a race ancient and evil, and faces the infernal truth of what he holds at bay. It's strange, unexpected even, that illumination should pierce such fathomless depths as those found beneath Mornstead, but the brilliant light of knowledge indeed slices through. For though the dregs of humanity wallow and umbral sinister nightmares lurk, so too does revelation shine upon the Dark Crusader. But what profane wisdom lies hidden? What priceless perceptions undermine a heart as stalwart and resolute as a harrower's? And what of the orphan martyr, nameless, who is charged with significance? What unnamed terror struggles against him? These tales weave seamlessly into the story that reverberates through Calvara's cavernous underbelly. A story of fear, of hunger, of a promise made and a faith broken, of penetrating revelation and eternal malice. Let's dive in. Our tale begins in the mines beneath once glistening Calrath City. Aptly named the Sunless Skein, these caverns contain innumerable miles of labyrinthine corridors and twisting tunnels. Here, darkness suffocates, claustrophobia sets in rapidly, and one can easily, fatally, lose direction. It swallows into its gaping maw all unfortunate souls who enter. The poor, indentured or criminal, are sent to this forsaken mine from above as penance for their transgressions. So too do the intrepid, hopeful of uncovering rich treasures, risk life in the skein. Calrath has always enjoyed splendor, its elite ignorant of the gnawing reality faced by many, hunger, homelessness, unpredictability. It's Mornstead's beacon of culture, excess free from want. But greater fortune casts its wonderful boon upon Calrath. Prospectors within the skein strike veins rich in precious stones, strategic metals, and rare components. Material avarice rises like a fever within Calrath's nobility and spreads its infection throughout the city. A cabal of greedy merchants and highborn stoke mining ventures to a frenzy all wish for a large cut in potential profits. The city's tunnels multiply overnight, reach deeper, fan farther, to harvest the Earth's spoils. In this whir of activity, a group of miners stumble upon what appears to be ancient remains of a civilization long ago fallen. Ruins are meticulously excavated to reveal extensive structures the purpose of which can only be guessed. These feckless miners and their covetous overlords, however, disturb Earth that for centuries blanketed a terrible deity in slumber. Now agitated, its evil invests itself into the land. Pandemonium blinds to dangers lurking beneath the stones. Calrath unwittingly chances upon the decayed remains of a race that predates them by many centuries, perhaps even millennia, the Nohuta. Scant information is preserved through the years and much of Mornstead has forgotten its predecessors, but the Nohuta were a civilization from antiquity that rose to dominance through their understanding and worship of Umbral, the realm of the dead. The only known extant Nohuta is the incomprehensible Malhu, found within an Umbral shrine in Skyrest Bridge. So devoted were the Nohuta to their god, an entity they revered as the putrid mother, 
that all aspects of life revolved around her will. From the starved armor tinked, we learn surface-level teachings of Nahuta religion. Its lore reads, The putrid mother feeds ceaselessly, for the blind, insane, mewling chaos that is existence ever strives to continue its idiocy and must be returned to its natural state. What Kalrath prospectors uncover is a place of worship, a structure steeped in the putrid mother's macabre reverence. Petrified remains of emaciated bodies rise up around the antechamber's mouth, offering themselves as sacrifice to feed their unceasing mother. What Kalrath cannot comprehend is the evil that dwells within, an insidious darkness that reaches from beyond the void to manipulate the living. Evidence of this land's sanctity to umbral adherence and its strong ties to the realm of the dead can be found in the Nahuta effigy and polearm, remnants of that long-forgotten race. How the god's domineering aura crushes minds and bends wills is echoed in the polearm's hidden lore. There was little infighting amongst the Nahuta throughout much of their history, the species almost always completely united in their utter devotion to the putrid mother. Prospectors, historians, chroniclers, and barons salivate over the profit and fame flowing from this discovery. They cannot realize the putrid mother's gaze is upon them, her strings pulling invisibly. Miners toil in the muck and grime, spurred by stern sunless gain overseers to extract both jewels and history, oblivious to the significance of their find. For a time, the mines boom as precious gems and metals are ripped free brought to the sun Bay city above. Over weeks, however, as the tunnels drive deeper beneath Kalrath, as the silence and abyss grow heavier, as more of the ruined Nahuta structure is revealed, a coincidental affliction strikes both workers and overseers, bound to the stirring of an infernal deity. Dread, a feeling pervasive in the umbral realm and strong enough to shatter souls instantly, begins manifesting an axiom realm of the living. Slowly, insidiously, madness pierces the minds of all within the sunless skein, evidence of which is found scattered throughout abandoned tunnel networks and elevator shafts. The item description of sunless skein key offers much insight into events. The sunless skein overseer's treatment of the miners grew increasingly cruel over time, and although some miners sought to defend themselves, ultimately, there was no defense against the madness which crept into both the overseers' minds and their own. The rage and cruelty perpetrated by the overseers is terrible. Beatings, torture, isolated imprisonment increase both in frequency and intensity, as hapless miners can do little to resist their custodians. This barbarity sounds again in the item description of the miner's pendant looted from a corpse within the tunnels. It reads, the two enchanted crystals which form part of this pendant are of little material value, but that didn't stop a sunless skin overseer surreptitiously beating its owner to death and stealing it from his corpse in the mistaken belief that they might be. And we yet again see the crazed bloodlust consume overseers in the ring of bones, crafted no doubt from ossified remains of mice, rats, and miners themselves. As the Deathless One ventures further into this cramped hell and reaches Kalras dank, flooded cistern, signs of its transformation into a place of profound abuse materialize. Cages hang from cistern shafts and walls, and grotesque devices of pure torment lie occupied by skeletal remains. Hysteria grips the people here, a location closer to the ancient Nahuta excavation site. Indeed, the further one delves, the further they are delivered from the warmth of Axiom's life force into Umbral's cold, discouraging embrace. The strength of Umbral entities within the cistern and their horrific presence is greater than in the mine network above. It's a place marked perhaps by significance in ages long past as the gateway to the putrid mother. For if the Deathless One explores cistern within Umbral, they are confronted by three shades, the bringers of silence, stillness, and nullity that stand as guardians. As mental affliction spreads throughout Sunless Skein, the mines and cistern run slick with blood. Stillness, pierced only by tortured whales. How is such mistreatment linked to the Nahuta and their putrid mother? 
Why is her presence oppressive? What led the people down a path of irredeemable cruelty and insanity? Minds, tight corridors, pitch black all weigh heavily on nerves and fray minds, but a darker force stirs in Sunless Gain's furthest depths. Umbral, realm of death, land of purgatory shrouded in the chilling mists of oblivion, lies transposed but imperceptible beneath its enlivened counterpart, Axiom. Most beings of Axiom never learn Umbral's existence. The veil between realms remains sturdy and closed. But following the rise of a deer, demon god, from his imprisonment, the concomitant corruption of the hallowed sentinel beacons, great tumult and chaos proliferate across the land. This wears on the veil that separates realms, allows creatures from both to transpose between, and, most significantly to those in Sunless Skein, grants opportunity to the manifestation of death, hunger, and desolation, the putrid mother, the incomprehensible deity of the Nahuta civilization, the god of Umbral, extends her aura, infiltrates Axiom, twists hearts and rends minds as she permeates from below. Mornstead is distinctly susceptible to umbral evils, as is revealed in the item description of the Odd Stone. The presence of umbral has always been potent in Mornstead, the kingdom unwittingly built upon a place where the veil between realms can be particularly thin. The place mentioned is doubtless the cavern excavated from Revelation Depths. The kingdom itself has a dark history with the Putrid Mother, distinct from Nohuta influence. Her presence and promises earned secretive devotion among Mornstead citizenry. When this blasphemy came to light, the hallowed sentinels ruthlessly purged countless cities and banished survivors of the sinister occult into exile of forsaken fens far reaches. Many heretics of Calrath were cast into the cistern's torture chambers where their sin was excruciatingly extricated. Reference to this event can be found while exploring Sunless Skane's passageways. Hidden behind iron bars of a cell, and accessible only in the realm of the dead, as a text of profanity. The umbral tome holds scriptures relating to the putrid mother and the salvation offered by her worship. Dark truths best kept in ignorance's shadow, as is heard in the item's hidden lore. Most beings live their entire lives unaware of the fact that from birth to death, and in some cases beyond, they are surrounded by the umbral realm and for the sake of their sanity, such ignorance is a profound blessing. These sentences illuminate Sunless Skane's descent into madness propagated by the revival and exhumation of the Nohuta ruins. If mere knowledge of Umbral frays sanity, then its physical manifestation and axiom unleashes a shattering few can resist. Its location is hinted in the Oddstone, but the Deathless One need only follow the hollow moans of crazed and corrupted miners. Deep beneath Calrath, further even than the Skane and Cistern penetrate, at the world's very foundation lies a font of delirium and illumination known as Revelation Depths. An unsettling paradox lingers in the cavern's dead air. Each step brings with it descent further into madness, but as the mind fractures, clarity rings. Insight reigns, belief in and worship of the putrid mother will bring promised salvation. With such strength is Umbral fastened here, that within the excavated worship chamber, a physical bridge exists connecting Axiom to the realm of nightmares. Offering as tithe Umbral scouring clumps and touching the well's thick, black waters brings one before the putrid mother herself in Mother's Lull. This is echoed in the clump's hidden lore. Deep beneath the surface of Mornstead stands a well, gazing into which offers revelations only to those who have proven their devotion to the putrid mother. To behold the massive eyes and fathomless mouths of the deity fills one with awe, dread, resignation. 
Knowledge that a god of unceasing hunger, of death and pestilence, exists just beyond an ever-expanding rift that once stretched to its limits will allow the putrid mother entrance to Axiom, bringing ruin to the realm of the living, is a revelation that comes in Mornstead's most dire hour. The kingdom's fate teeters on a knife's edge, stands on the precipice of extinction, and rests entirely in the fragile, delicate hands of one unnamed child. The hallowed sentinels, under the radiant leadership of Judge Cleric, discover the umbral horror lurking beneath the madness that consumes Kalras Underbelly. They must act with haste and decision to prevent the putrid mother from materializing in Axiom. An inquisition is launched to root out through blood the plague of umbral worship infecting Mornstead's citizenry. But to combat the threat directly, Judge Cleric arrives in Revelation Depths with a contingent of preachers, blessed warriors, and chaplains all those versed in Aureus' divine teaching and empowered by radiant magic. Incantations are conducted, rites are performed, all avenues of holiness are exhausted to seal the umbral rift, but to no avail. The putrid mother's darkness, invigorated by the chaos of a deer, snuffs out all light. Hope seems lost, but just as despair settles over Judge Cleric for her failing, word reaches her of a young child a boy plagued by grief and possessed of unbound potential. Little is known of the boy, perhaps orphaned, likely poor with no promise, other than what comes to us in secondary sources, passing whispers and hidden lore. What can be stated with certainty is that a strong connection to Umbral manifests within him, perhaps coinciding with the uncovering of Nohuta shrines at the well between realms. Nightmares haunt his dreams while chilling voices of the dead rattle in his mind during waking hours. Screams and fits of hysteria plague him constantly as the profanity dwelling within roils to the surface. The first phrase in the umbral spell martyrdom states, The boy had always been troubled by dreadful dreams and unsettling visions. This boy is brought before Judge Cleric and rigorously tested to his physical and mental limits. Latent power reveals itself within the child, infernal strength born from the dreaded umbral realm. How or why it came to evince itself is of no concern to the hallowed sentinels. They wish only to channel it and seal the putrid mother from Axiom. After short deliberation, a heartless, amoral act is perpetrated. The sentinels drag the boy screaming in chains to the font of Mother's Lull, perform a dark ritual that binds the rift in reality and saves their realm by consigning him to eternal imprisonment and unbearable torture as a living lock. The remaining lore in the Umbral Sorcery Martyrdom illuminates us. But it was only after he was condemned by the hallowed sentinels to serve as a bulwark against Umbral that he comprehended the power which had laid dormant inside him all along, and whence it came. Here the boy remains in isolated anguish, the vitality of his suffering imperative to save from oblivion the kingdom of Mornstead. The sad reality is professed by Pieta, she of blessed renewal in conversation with the Deathless One. To protect their human seal, the hallowed sentinels station avowed soldiers and pure blade knights near the entrance to Mother's Lull. These troops stand to confront the Deathless One as they make their journey into Revelation Depths. But ill-satisfied with one line of defense, Judge Cleric erects a physical barrier to ward off would-be interlopers and seal the madness within the mines. It's likely the sentinels are responsible for flooding Kalras Cistern, inundating Revelation Depths, forever drowning its secrets beneath impenetrable waters. For some time, this is where the child martyr remains, a tormented, unsung hero that protects Axiom from encroaching darkness. But soon, an errant crusader, a harrower by the name Dervla, herself bearing inner turmoil, happens upon the child. The gravity of their meeting and subsequent illumination tests her faith and tempts her from her holy path. Mornstead is vast, but the world is vaster yet, replete with myriad lands beyond the kingdom's borders. 
In the heart of territory administered by the Divine Church of Orion Radiance, news spreads of the demon god's uprising. Rumors ripple through court of the hallowed sentinel's corruption, of them desecrating past oaths and bending need to a deer's malignance. Such transgression against the church is intolerable. It cannot remain unpunished. The Dark Crusaders, a zealous and secretive branch of church militants, are mobilized to bring sin to light and reproach Mornstead's wayward sentinels. Dervla, a harrower among Dark Crusaders, is joined by the exactor Dunmire and companion blade of Paladin Isaac in the task of exposing hallowed sentinel blasphemy, of discovering how deep into the roots rot runs. The Dark Crusaders are so named because of their understanding and use of umbral magic through the profane umbral lamp. Tension between Umbral's bleak abyss and the divine light of Aureus rips at the heart of every Dark Crusader, burdened with the misery of undeath while fulfilling their charge. As the trio trudge through Mornstead's harrowing blight and sacrilege, diverting paths lead to relative isolation. Stripped of external support, Dervla must rely on internal strength to face the horrors before her, must place faith in her own conviction to silence the tension roiling within her soul. Reliance on umbral knowledge and magic to overcome tribulations stain victory. Subsequent triumphs ring increasingly hollow as more of the knight's humanity is stripped, replaced instead with infernal madness and dread. But Dervla is resolute. She continues inexorably and uncovers a trail of diabolic truths that leads straight into the unyielding darkness of sunless skein. The Harrower discovers a sinister plot by the hallowed sentinels. It appears the Holy Order has been stained not only by Adir's perversion, but so too by the ungodly application of umbral sorcery. As Dervla descends into the Dark Labyrinth, proof that the putrid mother has manifested beneath Calrath and poisoned the minds of those above is increasingly apparent. The Knight, however vigilant, is herself unable to resist the god's perfidious influence. Insanity, perhaps hastened by constant use of umbral magic, encroaches upon the recesses of Dervila's mind as turmoil consumes her. Alone, surrounded by death and desolation, a profound hopelessness oppresses the harrower. If we read the hidden lore attached to her sword and crossbow, we are apprised of Dervila's pitiable situation. Increasingly plagued by doubt and regret over her choices and the cause of the Dark Crusaders as a whole, Dervla felt lost and alone. So crestfallen is she that her companion, the exactor Dunmire, believes Dervla irredeemably lost. He harbors only scathing invective for the harrower, preaching her own descent into blasphemy and hysteria that grips the hallowed sentinels. Fearing that she is a soul wayward in its wandering, Misguided by the siren call and allure of Umbral's putrid mother, Dunmire requests the Deathless One end her suffering and silence her voice completely. Another, a harrower who revealed herself to be an apostate and thief when she stole the apparatus with which I am able to converse with the Council of Overseers. An apparatus I would see returned to me by your hands. Harrower Dervla can be found in the tenebrous bowels of the mine. A fitting place for one who has turned her back on Aureus Light. Whatever poisonous lies Derva may spit at you, heed them not, for they are nothing but the foul blasphemies of a fallen knave. But what if there is a different end to the harrower's tale? What if Derva's soul is bolstered, not dissolved by what she uncovers in the sunless skein? If instead the depths of revelation elicit clarity over insanity? There are several possible avenues explaining what becomes of Hera or Dervila as she descends into Dark Abyss, each with varying degrees of plausibility, all of which will be laid out and left for you to determine. The first is of a will fortified and faith invigorated. Illumination comes to Dervila as she reaches the bottom of the cavern and approaches the antechamber where the young martyr is held. The second phrase of Hera or Dervila's sword item description reads, Dervla felt lost and alone, until the day she descended to the base of Sunless Skein and discovered purpose and companionship anew. This purpose is thrust on the harrower 
after learning the terrible significance placed in the child martyr, his role in holding Umbral's insatiable god in abeyance. The Sentinels, before corruption consumed them, strived to contain as best they could the putrid mother through this daring ritualistic gambit. But now, her dreadful aura has shattered their minds, enfeebled their resolve, stripped them of their duty. A duty the harrower now takes into her own hands. A storm of violence and lethal cunning tears through ranks of blind, hallowed sentinels as Dervless slays the child's twisted guardians, an event that unfolds in the retelling of this umbral scouring. And indeed, if we scrutinize the entryway to the martyr's prison, we see corpses of sentinel soldiers hacked with ease. Exhausted by her journeys in Mornstead, faced with existential questions and profound realizations, Dervla nonetheless emerges from the internal crucible of her heart with newfound conviction as she steps across the threshold and lays eyes upon the orphaned boy, held in eternal torment and chained to stone. Witness to his suffering, but aware of its necessity, Dervla pledges to ease his agony, to protect him against all threats. A promise is made, an oath sworn, that bind the two unexpected companions together. This rite is symbolized in a pair of flower bracelets exchanged, which we see in the item, Remembrance of the Unbroken Promise. Delicate, but possessed of a beauty and hope, these flowers are much like the boy in Dervla's eyes, and he too feels a strong connection to the indomitable harrower, which rings out in the remembrance item description. The boy had not seen another living being for some time when the fearsome dark crusader entered the chamber which was his prison. But eventually, in them he found something which he had seldom experienced before and never expected to again, solace. Both have known solitary hardship. Both have witnessed atrocity and experienced the dread that lies beyond their realm. Alone, they would surely succumb. Together, they will endure. Here the pair remain, an eternal vigil over the bridge between realms, the only obstacle impeding umbral evil from spilling forth until the Deathless One arrives in Revelation Depths and follows Harrow or Dervilus trail. Contempt and hatred are all she feels for the exactor who once acted as counsel. She sees in the Deathless One only Dunmire's puppet, an extension of his will. Hostility breaks into bloodshed, but not before Dervla shares sparse, illuminating words. Another unfortunate made a slave to unceasing hunger. I pity you. But. As bleak as this refuge may be, it is our refuge nonetheless. And you are not welcome here. A slave to unceasing hunger. Is this the hunger for power and glory, or is this a bestial, otherworldly hunger? Her words conjure images of the putrid mother's irreverent rapacity. Does Dervla see in the Deathless One a putrid child, one twisted to insanity by the umbral lamp, a fate she herself narrowly avoided? Their bleak refuge insinuates the boy and Harrower are threatened, attacked, or hunted. While exploring Revelation Depths, we find many hallowed sentinels. Perhaps they are the force from whom the pair take refuge. Or perhaps it's a refuge for the mind, a chamber that pulses with the mother's aura, that reverberates with the moans of the dead, but that is all silenced in the solidarity shared by the two individuals. Through this perspective, it seems Dervla, the lone knight, has retained her sanity despite Umbral's leeching presence and vowed selflessly to stand as bulwark against encroachment. The Deathless One before her, an agent of evil, a mind twisted by Dunmire's poison, intent on undoing all she upholds. 
The second explanation of Harrower Dervla's fate is far more bleak. It's a parable of temptation and vice, a possible fabrication extolled most vehemently by Dervla's companion. Dunmire, the Orion preacher whose own character is cast in a dubious light as the deathless one uncovers truth in Mornstead, insists the Harrower is lost to darkness. He colors her in the light of a night fallen from glorious heights to plummet into the depths of irrepressible despair. This may be a tale woven to distract from Dunmire's culpability and interest in the umbral realm, but clues found in Revelation Depths support his accusations. Bereshku, a lamp bearer from times before, himself was lost to madness and crippling umbral dread that suffuses the sunless skein. Lost Bereshku's magical catalyst can be found within labyrinthine caverns. Its hidden lore grants insight into his demise. It reads, Bereshku's mentor in sorcery had begun to suspect that his apprentice was slipping into both instability and ruthlessness, and so wasn't completely surprised an instant before he was obliterated when he triggered the magical trap Berescu had set for him. What remains of the lamp bearer himself lies just outside Revelation Depth's antechamber, wherein the innocent martyr lies shackled, suggesting a strong connection between umbral hysteria seeping from the Terran reality at Mother's Lull and its impact on Bereshku. His vestige description reads, A powerful, if erratic sorcerer seeking Mornstead's rumored lamp of immortality, Bereshku was initially thrilled when the role of lamp bearer was bestowed upon him. Although the longer he was exposed to Umbral, the more his mind fractured and degraded. Seeking to halt this process, Bereshku descended into the depths of Sunless Skein, where the remaining fragments of his sanity scattered like wind-blown ash, and he wandered the darkness, lost and insane, until the umbral light abandoned him. If the soul of this lamp bearer could be twisted by the putrid mother beyond reclamation, why not also the pledged knight? Harrower Dervla could be the deity's unwitting pawn, interrupted by the deathless one from enacting infernal rites to obliterate the veil between living and dead. Insanity may consume her already. The hallowed sentinels in the stigma slain in a vain attempt to thwart her blasphemy. Doubtless, Dervla has embraced umbral enlightenment to some degree, for in the fight against her, the harrower imbues her weapons with its dark magic. The totality of her wickedness reveals itself with the sorcery that binds Dervla to the martyr she protects. Death isn't enough to sever the pair's vow, and upon her defeat, the child enacts terrifying arcana to revive Dervla and meld their souls. The blue wisps of umbral magic snake from his gaping mouth as the boy lurches to his fallen companion. promise, unbroken, rises to once more challenge the Deathless One. This highlights the depths to which Dervla is consumed by the putrid mother's influence. A terrible monstrosity, no longer human, strikes with unrestrained malice. The grim fate of a harrower whose deeds in life were once widely extolled. Conversely, Dunmire's abject derision of Dervla may be an attempt to obscure the exactor's own heresy. The tomb was most enlightening. But it offered only the most minuscule glimpse into the depths of umbral, fragmented suggestions of what I already suspected to be so much more. Perhaps the harrower is more stalwart and cunning than initially thought, and uncovered the true intent behind Dunmire's actions in Mornstead. To glean what he could of umbral magic, learn of the dark deity he already worships from shadow, and unleash her hunger upon the realm. After Dervla realized this terrible illumination, she sought to beseech those within the Church of Holy Radiance and condemn the Exactor as a sinner. To do so, she ripped Dunmire's Crusader's Call and fled into the wilderness. The Dark Crusader's Call, from its item description, states that it is an artifact allowing direct communication over vast distances. Was this Dervla's attempt to expose her old companion for what he is, 
a corrupt acolyte of umbral darkness? Or perhaps there is another guilty party within the church in whom Dunmire confides, whispering news of his discoveries through the artifact. Unfortunately, Dervil is not present in Skyrest Bridge to defend her honor and her faith. The Deathless One only hearing through Dunmire's words the course of events. Whatever tale you choose to believe, Harrower Dervila's fate is lamentable. The pledged knight, an instrument of Aureus divine will, loses faith as a sinuous path obscured by darkness and fraught with danger pulls her ever further from the light. Whether Dervila finds revelation or madness in the caves beneath Mornstead cannot be claimed with certainty. But undeniably, hers was a soul shaken by the weight of her charge, and a conviction that was shattered in illumination found within the bleak abyss. What of Dervla's legacy? Is she to be canonized as a saint among the Dark Crusaders? One who pledged herself to Radiance, exposed the corrupt hypocrisy rampant in the hallowed sentinels, and fought valiantly to keep an evil god at bay? Or is she to be cast into oblivion? forgotten in the ceaseless march of time. A cautionary tale to those who would seek umbral magic, those crazed minds with the audacity to will their hungering mother into existence and consign all of Axiom to desolation. Heretic or hero, the Harrower Dervla embodied fully the gospel of Imperator Jacob as mentioned in the Dark Crusader's call. Darkness is not to be feared. It is a weapon and thus to be wielded. A sword, double-edged, however, is a danger not only to the one facing it, but also to the hands that wield it. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on Sunless Skein, Revelation Depths, and Harrower Dervla's story. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on the Harrower, which tale is most plausible, how she met her end, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community written scripts and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the librarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.